In this video, I will give you a detailed introduction to Biomems, which uh, means its origins and history, uh, liquid handling in general, then what is lab on the chip, and the classification of uh, Biomems and connecting fields. So this is an extension of uh, the shorter introduction. So here's a, a historical overview of uh, the origins of uh, uh, Biomems and microfluidics. It all began a really long time ago with uh, the revolution of miniaturization of uh, microelectronics. And uh, the turning point was in the 70s when the first microelectromechanical devices appeared uh, or were fabricated with uh, the same microelectronics or microfabrication technologies that were used to make integrated circuits. So these MEMS devices here we mean uh, actuators, sensors, and by actuators I mean mechanical. So by sensors I also mean mechanical. So for instance, uh, an accelerometer is your typical everyday MEMS device that you have nowadays uh, in your pocket, maybe more than one even. Um, then in the 80s, uh, there were already purpose-built uh, microfluidic devices microflow sensors, microvalves, and micropumps, uh, these are possible to integrate onto a fluidic circuit. And then in the 90s was when uh, truly microfluidics was formed as a discipline. But um, it all started with chromatography. And initially it started with gas chromatography, but um, but microfluidics really grew itself out of MEMS and liquid chromatography. And you can also track this by uh, looking at the equipment that we use in the labs also. We will use uh, uh, equipment that is normally used in high performance liquid chromatography. We use Teflon tubes, we use uh, threaded fittings and so on. Those are also used in uh, liquid chromatography. And you can order these from catalogs for liquid chromatography. Uh, in the 90s, the first uh, micrototal analysis system concept appeared. Uh, this is kind of similar in concept to lab on a chip, only it is uh, especially for analytical applications. What micrototal analysis means, you have all the analytical functions integrated onto your chip. That would be the concept at least. But it means uh, very similar things to, to lab on a chip. And in the 90s, there were the first uh, elementary microfluidic systems, mixers, reactors, uh, separation systems. And then with Professor Whiteside's uh, work with PDMS, soft lithography uh, started as the main uh, fabrication method for uh, microfluidic systems that uh, pretty much everyone in research is uh, doing nowadays. That is the, the kind of chip that uh, you will encounter if you go to a, a, a microfluidic research lab. First, we start with placing things. So I like to start with uh, these three questions, what, how, and why. And what we do here is liquid handling, which means, uh, if you remember, mixing, shaking, storing, dispensing of liquids, normally done in a manual way by uh, a professional who, uh, who does the pipetting and uh, uh, moving the containers and so on. And uh, in an analytical laboratory, be it chemical, be it biological, or even medical diagnostics, happens the same way. Uh, how? Initially, of course, manually, but uh, today, more often in an automated way. And by automation, we typically mean uh, industrial liquid handling robots. But uh, we can also mean something more novel, which would be microfluidics, which is uh, uh, a typical uh, biomems device. And the why is because most of these processes are uh, wet chemistry, which uh, means it's uh, done in water, uh, usually, and it's quite wet. And uh, yeah, 
pipetting is uh, time consuming and quite costly. So we would like to avoid uh, manual pipetting as much as possible. Therefore, the standard solution would be to uh, use multi-channel uh, pipetting in robots with air displacement pipettes. But the alternative would be to use, uh, now you see it up close, to use these uh, Lebona chip type devices where these different functionalities are unified on a single die. And uh, here you have the various uh, fluidic channels and the connections to them. And you also have uh, electronic interfaces with, for the, the sensors and actuators connecting. So up here is a close-up view of uh, the Hamilton Star robot, which I told you about in a, in a previous video. Uh, this is one of the popular industrial liquid handling robots, and it has several uh, channels of uh, air displacement pipettes that uh, move on a three-axis robotic arm and can pipette from container to container based on your workflow. It can perform pretty much everything that you have in your uh, analytical workflow. So it can mix, it can shake, it can heat, it can cool, and of course it can be, uh, move liquids in predefined uh, volumes between the different containers that you have. Uh, these are general purpose modular. Only problem is they are expensive and, and quite large compared to what Lebona chip can do for you. So Lebona chip, uh, that literally means laboratory on a chip. The goal would be to integrate all of your laboratory functions into a single chip. Liquid handling robots are an intermediate step compared to your traditional laboratory where everything is laid out in a room and then you have uh, one, four, five different people doing the, the, the workflow. So the Lebona chip would be a higher degree of integration, higher degree of automation, and it integrates one or more laboratory functions on a single die. And uh, I have used the term before, integrated fluidic circuit, just to have a good uh, comparison, because it is indeed similar to integrated electronics or integrated circuitry, and uh, they come from the same uh, environment. So initially, microfluidic devices were also made uh, in, in, in the same microfabricated way that uh, electronics were. They grew out of the MEMS industry. And uh, this will come later in the historical overview. Size regime is a sub-centimeter for the whole device, but for these individual channels, uh, a few microns to a few hundred microns. And Lebona chip devices are typically application specific, which means once you mold out these channels from whatever material you use, you cannot use it for a different purpose. Uh, now, to go even deeper into comparisons and, uh, and into uh, parallelisms, um, high throughput screening means large scale uh, biological or chemical uh, experimentation whatever the application may be, can be diagnostic, can be analytical, uh, and it is carried out in a professional setting. And here's typically where these uh, uh, multiple plates and, uh, and uh, multi-channel pipetters are used to process hundreds of individual samples um, in a very short time. Uh, this is characterized by large sample batches, uh, high initial investment, and, uh, and high operational costs, the need for professional personnel, and it is tied to a laboratory where you need to have the supporting infrastructure for these equipment. But uh, most important is high batch sizes, but low sample costs or low per sample costs, per essay costs, uh, whatever you can say. Point of care, uh, as contrasted to this, is uh, about small, uh, small scale tests carried out in the field at the point of care at your local clinic or at home. And uh, these work with uh, low cost instrumentation, but still the per device cost will be higher and the assay cost, so sample cost or, or per sample cost will be higher than for the high throughput screening. However, 
you as an individual can afford to buy it yourself, even in some cases. Here is a very uh, good example of, uh, of a typical point of care device, which is a, a glucometer that I'm sure everyone knows. And because of mass production, now the price of the device is uh, low enough that uh, everyone can afford it. But still, the consumable itself, which is uh, here the paper strip, is quite pricey. And that is actually uh, what, what is the main cost here. Uh, and it's also important to see that uh, point-of-care devices typically have a shorter learning curve. They don't necessarily need uh, trained personnel to perform it. So many of them can be performed at home by, uh, by basically anyone, and they are portable. That's also very important. But by portable, I don't necessarily mean handheld. They can also be benchtop analyzers that are still in the portable size regime. So once again, level net chip, miniaturized device integrating uh, into a single chip, one or several laboratory functions, analyses such as DNA sequencing or biochemical detection. These are just two examples. There can be many more. But uh, what we have here is uh, an example of the sequencing type of device. So I will not go into uh, very much uh, the details, but what I would like to call your attention to is we have uh, an integration here of uh, electronics, uh, complex electronics to, to perform electrophoresis. This will be featured in another lecture, so don't worry if you don't know what this is. Um, reagents are on the chip for this reaction. There are uh, ports for input-output operations, and then there are the various uh, fluidic functions like uh, mixing and uh, splitting uh, realized on the chip. And in this case, uh, there are also various uh, zones for temperature control. And this is all integrated into one chip. That is a lab on a chip device, but at the same time, it is also a microfluidic device because there are these uh, microchannels carrying fluids. That is why the name is microfluidics. This one is another example. It doesn't have any electronics on it. This is likely a, a polymer chip where uh, at the same time, however, you have a lot of things integrated onto the chip. So um, you have uh, uh, sample input ports, uh, then uh, splitting, then dry reagent storage, then um, uh, liquid reagents, and you have an incubation uh, chamber or channels for, for incubation of your sample. And in this case, reagents are fed in externally. And then you have a, a septum. Septum is, uh, is a rubber, um, is a rubber uh, membrane uh, through which you can pierce a syringe and, uh, and uh, remove the waste. And uh, yeah, the, there's also a, a drainage channel. So um, to push this concept even more, uh, this is your traditional laboratory environment with five different people uh, doing five different things. And you have uh, various benchtop instruments. You have uh, uh, liquid containers. And then uh, these professionals, they process your liquids. And uh, typically in a the, in the diagnostic setting, they would uh, process patient samples and uh, do the liquid handling operations and then do the different analyses in uh, these different instruments, which themselves uh, have sensors and actuators of various kinds. So lab on a chip, in principle, would be uh, targeting the integration of uh, all of these functions into a single chip. And uh, on the right side, you can again see the same diagram that we had in the short overview, but in this time, or uh, this time it's uh, uh, more visible, hopefully. And um, so these are uh, the overlaps we have in between these fields. And although this representation has biomems as a, a separate entity, all of these, so everything in this Venn diagram falls under the umbrella of biomems, or it can fall under the umbrella of biomems. So, but uh, these are the uh, cross sections, and uh, I will go over each of these and uh, talk about uh, 
what they contain and then uh, double down on what we will focus on in this uh, course. So in the traditional sense, biomems, when you say biomems, then uh, you might think about something like this. This is one uh, key area. So biomedical microelectromechanical systems. This one here is a, a neural probe with an embedded channel. This embedded channel or microchannel is uh, possible to use for drug administration. Uh, such as it was done in this test. So the, the electrode was implanted into the brain of, uh, of uh, a rat or a mouse. And um, recording was uh, uh, done for neural signals. There are the various recording sites on these uh, electrodes on this uh, microscope image. And they were recording neural activity, so action potentials. And uh, with dr uh, drug administration, they could modulate uh, the, the nerve signals. And that was the point of this uh, investigation that I brought to you as an example. You can um, find the link in the PDF uh, to, to, the, to the article. Uh, organ on chip. Not part of this course, but uh, you can watch uh, this nice uh, uh, video which describes uh, what organ on chip is about and what it does. Basically, the idea is that in lab on a chip type devices, we can implement uh, different types of tissue for, uh, for different types of study. Typically, it would be uh, studying the effects of pharmaceuticals. So you can implement, for instance, a liver on chip for testing drug metabolism, and uh, that can give you a lot of information on, uh, on the toxicity profile, for instance, of uh, a certain uh, type of drug. Uh, without actually having to test in live subjects. So this uh, is obviously not a, a live subject, but it can act similar to one. For instance, you can have um, nerve cells immobilized in organ-on-chip type devices, and you can also test uh, the barrier functions of uh, the blood-brain barrier in uh, such an organ-on-chip device. Then uh, microarrays. It's not going to be part of this course, but uh, microarrays can be used uh, to, uh, to test DNA, to visualize uh, DNA. And um, like in this case, to differentiate between um, normal cells and cancer cells based on uh, uh, variants of, uh, of RNA. And uh, in the microarray, there are oligonucleotide probes immobilized uh, onto the microarray valves. So these valves are um, a couple of microns across where uh, you have uh, these uh, uh, nucleotide probes immobilized, which uh, can connect specifically to your target DNA sequences. And um, then you add the fluorescent uh, markers and uh, you can get a fluorescent signal if you excite this microarray. And then uh, these, are, these different sequences are marked with different markers. And then you will get uh, 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 different uh, signals for the different uh, sequences that you have captured. So that's uh, how you can do a DNA microarray. Uh, then cell cultures, again, not really the focus of this course, uh, since this is oriented towards biology. But uh, just to mention, uh, microfluidic cell culturing uh, has the advantage of, uh, of having better access to the cells themselves. So you can have the cells embedded in between microchannels, which allows for a better uh, perfusion with nutrients, with oxygen, and so on. So it can increase the survivability of uh, your cell culture. And at the same time, you have the option to integrate uh, electronics into your mixture. So, for instance, if you want to uh, record uh, neural signals from a, a nerve tissue culture, then uh, you can integrate uh, a multi-electrode array underneath this microfluidic cell culture. But the principles are generally the same as uh, in every cell cultural application. So the goal is for you to try to maintain these cells as long as possible in a, in a cell culture chamber. 
So in this video, we talked about liquid handling, we talked about uh, what is lab on a chip, we talked about the classification of uh, biomems and connecting fields. Thank you.